Hey everybody, Mr. T here. Uh, this topic is, as the slide implies, aircraft engines. Um, and we're going to cover all types of aircraft engines. We're not going to talk about rockets. That's going to be uh, a future topic. But uh, thank you so much to the folks at PLTW for putting together most of these slides. Um, I have changed a few and added some enhancements. So first, let's talk about uh, Newton's Third Law. Um, just a real quick refresher because we already went over that. So Newton's Third Law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Um, and why Newton's Third Law is important is um, when we get into the actual analysis of... Um, of engines, you'll see why that becomes important. So remember that for uh, a an aircraft in steady level flight, lift equals drag. Uh, I'm sorry, lift equals weight, and thrust equals drag. Um, and we're going to talk about thrust. So um, there are different types of propulsion systems. I mean, a lot of those are shown here. So, uh, you know, in the old days and the, the uh, invention of the airplane, there were propellers. Um, and then the term gas turbine uh, is synonymous with jet. So if you hear me say jet, uh, which I do a lot, um, that I'm really talking about a gas turbine. Um, gas turbines are also used, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, um, they're used for other things besides airplanes. There are also special kinds of jets called ramjets and scramjets, and then of course rockets. Um, we are going to focus on the first two in this uh, slides slide deck. So let's talk about um, reciprocating engines. So those are gasoline powered, uh, the kinds of things that you have on your lawnmower, on your automobile, um, and they have pistons. We're not going to talk about diesel power. Um, there's The big problem with diesel is this. The actual fuel itself, when it gets cold, uh, turns to basically jelly. Um, so you don't you don't want that when you're uh, you think about your airplanes a lot of airplanes they fly at several thousand feet it's cold up there um and diesel gets um gets gelatinous and you don't want it to happen your your engine will quit you fall out of the sky plus there's some other things with diesel as well so we're not going to talk about diesel uh, we will talk about a category called gas turbines which are jets and uh, there are several categories of those so let's get started. Um, reciprocating engines. Now those were the first engines. The Wright brothers used reciprocating engine, um, which has a piston, and you attach a propeller to it. And the propeller is really nothing more than a rotating wing. So there are two kinds of uh, reciprocating engines that we want to take a look at. One's called a two-stroke and the other one's a four-stroke. Um, and I'll go th just through kind of some main points here and then I'll show you um, a an illustration, if you will. <clears throat> a couple things that um, you need to know about two-stroke. Um, typically not used in aircraft. Uh, you might find them in like model aircraft that you'd fly around, remote control aircraft. Uh, but they have, they, they do four operations and we'll go over those here in a little bit, um, in one revolution or one cycle of a piston. Um, they are commonly used in, um, lawn mowers. If you've ever fixed your lawn mower or help, you know, your mom or dad or your neighbor fix a lawn mower. Um, those are the, they're, that's where they're used. They're heavy. They, uh, they are powerful. Um, uh, they're noisy and they use a lot of fuel. Four stroke engines, um, do the same, basically the same thing, except they use more movement. So, um, they use less fuel. Um, they're typically more quiet and, oops, uh, they are typically more quiet and you see these in cars, you see them, um, in aircraft. So here you can see, um, an animation and I'm going to get out of here and show you um, an animation here as well. So this is a two-stroke engine. Um, and here's how this works. So you see the little green particles. Um, that's fuel. And I'm going to go back here a little bit. Um, so what has happened is the fuel, mixed fuel and air, have gathered up here at the top. And you see uh, this spark is, is going to explode. And it's going to push the top of this piston is going to push it down 
And when it does that, uh, the gray is the exhaust. At the same time, you see when that's coming down, the green particles are the fuel and the air. They are coming around and they're going to the top for the next cycle. So this is, this is the down cycle. And when it pushes back up, it's going to compress. And once again, it's going to go back. So let's take a look. Let's look at it in real time. Expansion, contraction, explosion, and it repeats. So with one rev, when we say one revolution, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so let's take a look at the four cycle. It does the same type of thing, uh, but it has um, it does a little bit differently. It does two revolutions. So here we have the fuel that's come in, and it it is already it is already exploded. And we'll come back to this. It's already exploded. It's pushed down. So now it's pushing out. Note this valve opens and is pushing the exhaust out this way pushing the exhaust out now this valve opens and it's sucking the air and fuel in it's now going to compress it there's a spark explosion and it's going to start all over again so let's take let's watch that so so that is the difference So now we're back to our slides. Um, so know the difference between two-stroke, four-stroke, advantages and disadvantages. Um, and one of the or, uh, one of the things about uh, aircraft engines, early engines, they use something called radial engines. And so here's what that looks like. Uh, this is a, a picture provided. Um, in the original of this presentation, and I left it there just to show you. It doesn't really doesn't really show you what a radial engine is. This is actually off the Spruce Goose. Um, this is a better picture of a radial engine, and you'll notice these um, long cylinders coming out. Those are pistons. So that is unlike your car, uh, which is an, typically an inline engine. It might you might have a V6 uh, or a V8, but typically you'll just have your pistons in a line. Here they're rotated around uh, around a shaft that turns the propeller. There's also something called a rotary engine. So uh, for a radial engine, um, these stay stationary for a uh, for a radial engine. For a rotary engine the pistons themselves actually move um, and then there's a gearbox that uh, turns the propeller as well so something to need you'll need to know um, something about reciprocating engines and I'm gonna just kind of click through here real quick um, for your car for your airplane um, and this is an older generally an older concept modern engines um, at least in automobiles don't typically use carburetors um, and newer engines and airplanes as well don't use these but you should be familiar with the concept of a carburetor so what a carburetor is is it is a device that mixes fuel um, and air and it does it using suction and um, here's a good Here's a good view of it. So this is this is a model of what your car might look like. So air is taken in through and it's uh, taken through this device. It's filtered in, um, and then it comes in here. And down here is the the engine, the piston. Okay, so it is it is sucking fuel, which is right here, fuel and air mixture. It's sucking that into the cylinder to be burned. But what happens is in a carburetor, um, this is called uh, the Venturi effect or it uses the Bernoulli equation, which is right back here, Bernoulli's law. So remember that for um, when we get to a constricted area here, the velocity goes up, but the pressure goes down. Here's, here's a bad thing about what can happen with the carburetor. In this area here, this low pressure area, um, if you have too much water vapor or high humidity and you're up at a higher altitude, uh, this can get ice in it. Uh, and if you get ice in there, it can choke off the fuel. That's bad. You don't want that to happen. Uh, so more modern engines use direct fuel injection so they don't use this type of thing but something to be aware of 
Um, so let's take a look now at gas turbines. Um, so most people call these jets, and I call them jets all the time. Um, and here are some four main types. You'll see them here, and we'll go through all those. Um, and you will need to know all these, and you'll need to know the differences. So a turbojet um, is the oldest, and it's really kind of the core that everything else is uh, based upon. So there's a turbojet, and we'll go through all the different components there. A turbofan, so it's really, this is a turbojet with a really kind of a special kind of propeller on it, or a fan. Um, it's not really called a propeller, it's called a fan. If you do put a propeller on it, instead of this fan, uh, there's a special gearbox in here that connects to the shaft of the turbojet. That's called a turboprop. Um, and there are different reasons why you would want to have one or the other, and we'll talk about that. And then finally, there's an afterburning turbojet. So once you get um, your air fuel mixture burned here uh, when you get to the back you still have some energy that you can use so you might inject fuel here um, you don't see that on commercial aircraft you see that on military aircraft um, so gas turbine in general so gas turbine um, and here you see different kinds of gas turbines this is a uh, c5 a, Lock, a lockheed galaxy c5 um, and I think I'm just going to skip over this because we're going to talk about all this stuff. Uh, okay, so here are the different parts of any jet engine. They're all based on these four things here. So the intake, uh, which obviously is where the air comes in. So air is our working fluid. Um, it's compressed, so that means that um, the density here is changing. Pressure and temperature are changing as well. Um, where it says power, um, typically we don't use that word. That's the combustion chamber or burners. Um, you, you will hear that those two terms used. Typically you won't hear power. And then you'll hear um, exhaust or expansion. So there's intake, compression, um, power for burning, and then exhaust or expansion. So let's take just a little bit, uh, a little bit more detailed look at that. So um, here's a, a schematic, and I don't know exactly what engine this is. Uh, this is an afterburner engine, and I can tell because it has uh, an extended nozzle here. Um, so air enters the inlet right here, and the inlet design is pretty complex. Um, that that will definitely affect the performance of your engine. We're not going to get into all the complexities there, but it goes through um, compressor. So this part has, uh, it's called, they're called rotors and stators, and they're really little, they're little wings if you look at um, the cross section of them. And the rotors turn the stators do not. And what happens is air flows through here and it gets compressed. And the reason you compress it is you get more oxygen. So here you inject fuel and you have a fuel uh, and an oxidizer. Air is the oxidizer, specifically oxygen in the air is combined with fuel and it's burned here. And then it expands in the turbine. And this is really where your power comes from. Um, is the expansion here. So if we take a look at what happens to the pressure as we go through um, go through the engine and the temperature, um, this is the it's it's generally cold here. It is um, it's going to change a little bit um, temperature wise, but the pressure is really going to go up up until it hits the combustor or the burner um, and then it's going to expand here quite a bit um, and this is where uh, the turbine is where you get um, the expansion that turns these blades which turns this shaft that's where you get your electricity um, and all the power that uh, runs everything else in your aircraft it comes from turning this um, and if you happen to be uh, a military jet and are need a little extra thrust you inject more fuel here and because it's so hot still uh, it will it will combust with the the remaining oxygen and you'll see flames shooting out um, so get familiar with what 
happens here. So compression, burning, expansion, so your pressure goes down. Okay, temperatures are going to be really high right here uh, in the burner and the turbine. So some special materials are required there. Um, and as well as in the nozzle, that's going to be really hot. Um, just another quick look, uh, more of a um, generic look, if you will. So um, you have your compressor, fuel, or combustor. Com they're called combustor cans, um, and this is a this is a generic uh, gas turbine engine. You might actually see these on the roofs of buildings. Um, I worked for a company where we had gas turbines as backup generators if uh, the city had a blackout. So now let's talk. That was a, a turbo jet. Let's talk about turbo fans. One of the things we want to talk about with turbo fans is something called bypass ratio. So first of all, a turbo fan has a turbojet core, which is right here, uh, right in the back. Um, it has the combustor. I'm sorry. It has the compressor, the combustor, the the turbine, and you might have multi multiple stages in turbines. You see the purple and the green there. Um, and then the nozzle. But this part in the front here, um, that's called the fan. And the amount of air that goes through the fan and around the engine, around the core, okay, so that amount of air divided by the amount of air that goes through the core, that's called the bypass ratio. That's something you'll definitely need to know, definitely need to understand when you design a jet engine. Uh, that is uh, a big variable that you want to look at. So again, this is uh, still a, a jet engine, and it's called a turbofan. Um, some advantages to a turbofan are that it is more fuel efficient. It uses less fuel. You don't get quite as much thrust out of it, but you might not need as much thrust. So if you compare a commercial airliner to example uh, an F-22 or any kind of fighter aircraft. Um, fighter aircraft need to move quickly, fast, and be agile. Uh, commercial, commercial airliner does not. Commercial airlines make their uh, money selling seats. They want to be fuel efficient. The military doesn't really care. They want a lot of power. So that's why most uh, military aircraft um, if they use a turbofan, they don't use as much bypass. Um, the other advantage uh, for commercial airlines too is they're not uh, not quite as noisy. Um, so just real quickly, where we've been uh, is turbojet has no bypass. A turbofan does have bypass, um, and there are uh, low different kinds of bypass ratios. So you might hear the terms like high bypass, low bypass, um, and so on and so on. And just, so here are some representative numbers. So a low bypass ratio would be one, which means the amount of air that goes through the core is the same amount of air uh, that, that goes around it. So same amount around it, so it's a one to one. Um, and it's a ratio, so it's unitless. Um, an example of medium bypass would be five, high bypass would be six to ten. Um, military, some military aircraft might use some low bypass, um, especially non-fighter aircraft, cargo airplanes definitely um, are going to going to use turbofans. And um, high bypass, the higher bypass, generally the more fuel efficient. Um, related to that, to the turbo fan, is something called a turbo prop. So a turbo prop looks like this. It has the turbo jet core, um, and it has a gearbox here, and then it has a propeller. And one of the things about a turbo prop, um, yes, it does have a bypass ratio, and it's it's huge. Um, it says here that the the bypass ratio is 50, and you could you could make an argument for a lot of different numbers there. But uh, basically, this is used for 
um, shorter haul commercial airliners, smaller ones. And again, the reason you would want to do that is it is more fuel efficient. So let's take a, a real quick review of, um, and, and maybe this is a better view of one that, uh, that some things that we've looked at. So you're going to have an inlet where air comes in, a compressor section, uh, a burner or combustor, uh, and then a turbine. And the turbine is what's connected and drives the shaft that turns everything in here. This is where the work is done. And then it's expanded through the nozzle. Um, and you'll see some fighter jets change their nozzle area. Um, and that also changes the net thrust. So just real quick, uh, the turbojet overview, it, it was, it is the simplest, um, and it was the first jet developed. Uh, and if you do remember what the, the first jet was, it was the ME-262, at least the first aircraft, uh, that w flew, how do I say this? It was the first commonly known jet aircraft. There were, of course, some experimental things. Um, and turbojet has no bypass. It has high thrust, uh, low fuel efficiency, and it's very noisy. Uh, my favorite airplane of all time, the SR-71, uses some big turbojets. These, I mean, this thing is basically an airplane designed around jet engines. Um, and if you get a chance to go, I believe this is in uh, the National Air and Space Museum. If you get a chance to go there and see it, um, go see it. It's pretty cool. Turbofan. Um, anywhere a, a bypass ratio from a half to 15 or so, um, I would say 7 to 10, fairly typical for commercial airlines. Um, modern, it says modern military, some fighter aircraft use them, uh, but cargo aircraft definitely use them. Um, if you have a fighter aircraft, the bypass is going to be pretty low. Um, it combines high and low speed and really good performance. Um, and here's here's what a real fan looks like. So here you can see a person sitting in the housing. I think this is a uh, triple seven, um, and they're shipped um, a lot like this. And you can see how big that fan is. That would be a pretty high bypass uh, turbo fan. And here's just some examples. Here's what a seven sixty seven looks like. Um, there's a question here. What might be the purpose of the uh, white stripe on there? Well, you, if you see that going around, sometimes it's hard to tell if these things are, are moving or how fast they're moving. Um, that gives an indication of how many RPMs. And just some more examples. Um, here is an example of a low bypass turbofan for military. Um, notice this. So Two, two big differences here. High bypass for a commercial aircraft, and there's no afterburner. So fan, compressor, burner is right here, um, and then expansion. Um, same thing here. Here's some bypass, compressor, burner, turbine, and then afterburner here. Um, and here's just a different view of something we've already seen. So you have uh, the fan, you have the compressor, you have the combustor cans or burners, um, and you can see the pressure go up all the way. It's compressed and compressed and compressed until it hits the burner. Um, it can't. Ex it can't. It wants to expand, so it expands through the turbines, um, and then you have a little extra pressure here, uh, which is important. Turboprop, we already talked about as well. So it is a gas turbine with a propeller attached to it, and it's used in low speed, lower speed transport. It's still a jet. Um, I generally don't call it a jet. I call it a turboprop, but technically it is a jet. Um, so if you're flying from Chicago to Des Moines or Indianapolis, where you could drive in a couple of hours, uh, you might fly in a smaller aircraft that uses a turbojet.
Um, another term that we're not going to really go over here is called a turbo shaft. Um, it is related to a turboprop. It has a gearbox in it, um, and instead of using a propeller, um, it is attached to a shaft that uh, rotates a uh, rotor. Um, and here's what uh, a turboprop would look like. You've probably seen those. Um, afterburners, we've talked about a little bit. It has the same core. Um, so it has inlet, compressor, burner, turbine, afterburner. And what happens here is there's just fuel that's dumped in there and it burns uh, because it's so hot. Uh, very, very inefficient. Um, and the only time you would see these is on a military plane, maybe on takeoff, or if they are in combat and trying to accelerate at a really high rate. Um, and you see after burning turbofan, um, here's just another example of what is what. So you have a three stage fan, uh, compressor, combustor, turbine, and then um, exhaust. So where do engines go? They can go a lot of different places. Um, generally, we see them under the wing. Um, they can go in the back. They can go uh, even in the vertical uh, stabilizer. Um, I've seen them there. One thing to consider when you are putting and when designing a whole aircraft is the CG. So because engines are pretty heavy, um, but they can generally go anywhere. Um, and here you see, this is an MD-11, you see uh, the jet and the vertical tail. Um, here you see, um, I'm not sure what aircraft this is, it looks like a business jet. Um, they're mounted um, in the back, um, and there's some under the wings here. That's a 747 there. So they all have, regardless of whether they are reciprocating engines or jets, they all have a lot of these things in common. Okay, they have an intake, so where the fuel uh, and air uh, have to be brought in. So in a jet engine, its air um, is compressed, um, so the fuel-air mixture doesn't necessarily happen in the jet, uh, in, a, in a turbojet but the air is certainly compressed. The fuel air is not. The fuel air happens in the burner for a jet engine. The power or the burner, um, and then the exhaust. So these four things, all those jet engines have in common. And I just talked about that. And here you can see a graphic example of intake, compression, ignition, and expansion. So you might want to know those four terms. Um, and just real quick, some alternate uses. I talked about some of these already. Um, power generators. Um, ships use jet engines uh, for their power. Um, a lot of them do. Some of them use reciprocating diesel engines. Um, they're also used for uh, to pump natural gas and even a few race cars. Um, here's something that, um, this is a little bit different than you would see in my PLTW, and this is um, a better and more correct way to write it. So how do you calculate thrust for a gas turbine? So N, the N here is net thrust, because if you go through uh, the jet engine, there are different, the different stages uh, provide, some provide negative thrust, uh, and some provide positive thrust. And when you add them all up, the net thrust is what you're interested in. Um, so we pronounce this M dot. And this is really the amount of air that's flowing through a given time. So and you see that down here. So that is the units there are kilograms per second or pound mass per second. Um, and then delta V is the change in. So it's the final minus the initial velocity. Um, it can get more complicated than that, but that's all we, we really need to know for our purposes. So E is the exit, the nozzle exit velocity, and I is the inlet air velocity. So we're talking about the air here. 
So uh, I'm not going to finish all of these slides, um, the last few. I will I will go through them very quickly. When we get to our design project, uh, we are going to use a model that will have several inputs. Um, so some things you'll need to, some concepts that you'll need to know are Mach number, which we already know, altitude, bypass ratio, which we went through here, fan pressure ratio, which we will talk about, uh, which is um, if you have a turbo fan, uh, what is the pressure um, at the inlet and the outlet? Um, and because it's a ratio, that's unitless. Compressor ratio, uh, again, that is the outlet over the inlet, uh, the fuel to air mixture, um, and then it'll output thrust and specific fuel consumption. Um, and I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit to specific fuel consumption. Um, some things, and, and here's the fan pressure ratio. Um, you will need to know that and some typical values. So I'll stay here for a second, and I'll just let you read that. If you want to stop, stop. Thrust, we know what that is. Specific fuel consumption, that is, um, it's the inverse of what you think for a car. So for a car, we typically talk in miles per gallon. Uh, specific fuel consumption, or really uh, more appropriately, thrust TSFC, um, is kind of the opposite. It is the fuel consumption per pound of or per thrust. So it is fuel consumption rate. Uh, so if you want to talk metric, it's kilograms per hour divided by the thrust. Or if you want to talk in U.S. customary, it's pound mass per hour divided by pound force. And those are, those are the units. So you want a low, if you think about it, you want high thrust and you want low fuel consumption. So you want this ratio to be low. Lower is better. In a car, you want high miles per gallon. Okay, so that's how that's um, that's kind of a good uh, analogy here and something good to think about. That's how they're different. TSFC or SFC. And that is it, everybody.